Well, here we are. Uh, this is not, this, it's Friday, um, as, as always, it's uh, February 23rd, but this is not the weekly video. That'll be coming up later on today. We'll post it as always. But this is a, a, a different type of video because I realized that w w over the over the week, over the the last few months, we talked about a lot of lots that were coming up, many on the uh, global member pages and on, um, on through the global pages, Sotheby's and Christie's sales and so forth. But I didn't go back um, as I try to do and uh, uh, tell you what the things brought. So what I'm going to do in this video, this is a fairly quick one, um, go through some um, items that people seemed interested in and see what they brought. All right. And uh, the, these are the most recent things that have been added to the global pages. But um, I want to go back and uh, uh, go through some results of previous sales. That's all we're going to do right now. All right. But it's sort of interesting because the prices have been quite good. And uh, later on today, we're going to talk a little bit about some other sales. But for now, I want to uh, focus on, uh, we'll get over to these. Uh, many of you remember a few weeks ago, these were coming up at Bonham's, um, I think in Boston, yeah, at Skinner's. And uh, we they had a two to $2,500 estimate. And I talked a bit about them and said that we'd had a pair uh, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, very similar to this that brought 3,000. So I, I was wondering what they would bring this time around. Well, this time around, a very uh, these fairly well-known types of aces sold for 5,000 plus the premium, which at Skinner's is 28%, uh, so, or Bonhams, I should say, they're, they're now under the Bonhams banner. Um, so the, it ended up being around $6,400. So the price of these vases have doubled um, since the, the, the pair we sold, um, uh, I think maybe about uh, nine or 10 years ago. So that's sort of an interesting result. All right, uh, this, you may remember this, this beautiful piece of silk. And I, we sort of speculated on um, uh, whether it might be an imperial thing. Um, the quality was awfully good. I thought the estimate was terribly low. Um, the, the color was spectacular. This, this very rich egg yolk yellow and very, very fine weaving. And uh, uh, we were very interested in this piece because the estimate was only 1000 to $1,500, which seemed very inexpensive. And this was also at, at, the, at the Bonhams uh, 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 Skinner sale in, in, out in uh, Marlboro, Mass. The, the, the Valance ended up selling for 28000 plus premium. So uh, evidently, uh, the people that went to see it in person, um, um, I suspect there was a lot of that. And uh, they came away very favorably uh, inclined towards it being maybe a late Qinlong or uh, Jai Jing period uh, silk. But uh, absolutely great quality, as we commented on before. And I, uh, I you know, we, we urge people always to go to previews to look at the things, if possible, in person. There's nothing better than seeing it in person. And uh, uh, I think I think you're going to find that uh, this is uh, just such a case. You'll notice that the bidding here, um, competing bid, competing bid, competing bid. Um, these were pro these sound like they're either all floor or phone bids from people who had, had seen the, this piece. So 28,000 plus premium, by about, uh, coming in at around uh, about $35,000 for this, all right? And then this, the pair of birds. Remember these, these very nice birds. I had emailed them to find out if these were on pith or on paper. I never got an answer, but the uh, quality was just outstanding. I thought these were great uh, pictures done probably right around 1800. And they certainly look like they're on paper to me. And they look like very good quality. And uh, they were estimated at just six to $800. And as always, we thought that was a bargain. And these were being sold at Freeman's uh, in, uh, 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 in Philadelphia. And uh, they ended up going for 2000 So uh, bravo on that. They were very nice, though. And then this. This was sort of a mystery to me. Um, they had dated this based on, a, on a, their interpretation. This was sold at Skinner's um, again. In, 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 no, this was at Bonham's, rather, over in the UK. Excuse me, not the Skinner sale. They had, they had, uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Marlboro Mass. There it is, Marlboro. It's very confusing the way they have these appear right now because it says Bonham's London, but sales in Marlboro Mass. It should say Bonham's Boston and, and sort of clarify that. But at any rate, uh, this was an interesting teapot. And, and I remember looking at it and disagreeing with the with the with the uh, dating of ju just being 18th century. Uh, this has all the hallmarks of being a, a, a Ming example. I've had Ming uh, Yixing teapots like this. They're, they tend to some of them can be very large, unusually large, and uh, in this exact shape and form. Um, they looked up the potter. I couldn't find this. I couldn't find this potter anywhere. And uh, uh, Skinner's didn't offer any information on his dates or when he was working and so forth. But boy, 
Um, the, we had we had a, a Ming pot like this uh, about seven or eight years ago that we sold. We sold it on eBay. It had a reticulated top. It was rather nice, but it was exactly the same form, exactly the, about the same size, I think. Maybe it was slightly larger, and it sold for forty five thousand dollars. So I think maybe somebody uh, got a great buy here. Um, and that and the, and the one we sold had a, a broken lid that had been stapled back together. Um, um, so I, I'm not sure about the dating on this, but I think if one of you got this, you got, I think you got a very good buy. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. All right. And uh, then over to this, this piece of jade, uh, this uh, uh, jade uh, uh, thing that was, uh, let's see, where was this sold? This was in Marlboro. Uh, we had this on the global pages. We thought it was very, very nice. And uh, it was estimated, we thought moderately at uh, twelve dollars to $1,800. We thought it was probably an 18th century uh, jade of herons uh, standing among tall grasses and so forth. And a very, very attractive piece of jade. It was, it was mounted on this uh, Looks like maybe a silver, silver. Yeah, it was. They said it was on silver. They probably tested it. But the carving here was quite exceptional, and very, very deep. Very, lots of, lots of three dimensionality to it. I like this a lot. And uh, it ended up going for probably. It, was, uh, it added up probably in the end to be about three thousand dollars. But it was a nice jade, very good jade. So it was good for Skinners to get that. And then over to this, this was the, uh, again, the uh, Bonner bottom sale in Marlboro, because um, they had a number of things that were fairly good. Um, we liked this vase a lot. We talked about it. It's, it's sort of the Kangxi style, but a, a late Qing example. And you know that because of this very soft, almost chiffon yellow ground with Femi Ver decoration. But it was a lovely vase. There was nothing wrong with it. Very, very attractive. Um, and it ended up doing fine. It ended up selling for eleven a thousand dollars plus premium, which I don't think was unreasonable. I think Skinner's um, uh, uh, Skinner's uh, Bonham Skinner. I don't know how they're going to call this. Um, did a good, pretty good job in this auction uh, by 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 showing a fair and low reserve, a low and fair and low estimates on their objects. And then there was this, this, this they, they had, I think, miscatalogued. We talked about it. They called it Kangxi style. And of course, anybody that looked at it would know right away that this was not a Kangxi style vase, but much more of a transitional period vase. And it was a transitional period vase, in my opinion. And I think in the opinion of the bidders, um, it was very nicely done and very unusual subject matter with a horseman underneath a, a canopy, Buddhist canopy. Um, here's the bottom of it and uh, some inscriptions on the back. And I think even at $2,000, it probably sold a little bit under the money because inscribed transitional period vases are extremely rare. Uh, but this this sure looked authentic, uh, I think, to uh, anybody who uh, took a, a, an honest look at it. And I'm not quite sure why Skinner's uh, or, or Bonham's dated it this way. It's a bit of a mystery. Maybe they'll email me and tell me why. I don't know why. And then onto this, this very nice grisaille decorated 18th century China trade um, uh, uh, the seamstress uh, pot. And you can see her here with her needle and thread. We talked about this. I think these are wonderful. And uh, these export pieces for, of this style are, are, are just uh, uh, selling for such reasonable prices. This went for $550 plus premium. So about $800 for it. Um, which is sort of the range we said it would bring. But it's, I think it's astounding that these bring so little now. Uh, uh, compared to what they were bringing in the 1990s. In the 1990s, a, a pot like this was worth uh, somewhere between $1,800 and $2,500. So they've really come down a lot in value. Some of the armorial pieces and other other rarities, may, may, maybe for more for the European market, seem to be recovering a bit. And some of them are bringing pretty good prices, as we saw in a, a sale we're going to get to, where they had some armorial wares that brought seventeen dollars and $20,000. But um, in general... Um, uh, these export pieces uh, have really softened up a lot in the last, uh, even even more, I think, in the last uh, three or four years. I think it's got a rebound, but it's uh, but for now, this is where they are. Um, and then there was this this uh, lot of bronzes. I think this was probably one of the be really good bargains in the sale. Um, you have three bronzes. How did they date them? I forget. I don't think they did. They date them as Ming three Ming style. No, these weren't Ming style. These were all Ming. And um, uh, um, these are all bought by internet bidders. Um, uh, I don't know why they dated them style. Again, um, maybe it's something going on in Boston. But as far as I can tell, the one on the left is obviously Ming. The one on the right is obviously Ming. It's a well-known type. They, they turn up in auctions. And these by themselves 
typically sell for anywhere from four or five hundred to up eight hundred dollars the one on the right and then you have this very nice little standing figure which looks main and probably i would think would be worth two or three hundred minimum and then this larger vase um we've seen these sell um in, in many auctions including at bonhams and christie's and uh they sell uh you know in the eight to twelve hundred dollar range so i think whoever bought this lot got a really good buy five hundred and fifty dollars plus premium um, and uh, we talked about it, uh, and uh, this is what happened. And as I said, I would say, just leave a bid. For heaven's sakes, if you have a doubt or a question, leave a bid on it. It's, it's the only way to go. And then this, this was a big surprise. This was uh, the Neil Auction Company. It was on the Global Pages. Um, I didn't, I, I found it sort of late. I didn't get much of a chance to talk about it. Uh, but uh, they, 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 uh, this is the, the five Confucian verses, um, and, and they dated this as 19th to 20th century. It's older than that. This is a, a, a sort of a mid 19th century work that's been mounted in the late 19th, early 20th century. But the work is much earlier and came out of a, a series of books very well painted, very well decorated. And uh, Korean screens have a very strong market, typically. Um, more than Korean ceramics and other things. For some reason, Korean screens have their own spot in the market. And uh, here's such a case. Uh, they had estimated it at just six to $800. Again, estimates mean nothing. And uh, they sold for $90,000. Um, and plus the premium. So by the time the buyer pays his bill with adding on the 30% premium, uh, he's going to be up around, uh, what, $115,000 for this screen from a six to $800 estimate. I bet they have one happy consigner there, huh? <laughs> All right, and then over to uh, Sotheby's sale. Uh, you may remember this. This was that very interesting uh, moon flask uh, that was in the. Um, uh, it was the. It was the. It was this. Uh, what was the name? It was a, sort of a cool name to their auction. Forget what it was. It was the uh, uh, press. Uh, the the e, oh, this was the Irv, uh, Carol, the Ian and Caroline Irving collection, not the other Irving in New York. This was another Irving. Um, I thought this was maybe from that other collection where they have all the best things from around the world in it. No, this was a private collection. But you may remember that this was the one that had been um, exhibited at, uh, uh, I want to get this right. Uh, it was exhibited, um, uh, the Royal Family, Prince of Wales, uh, Frederick Augustus, Duke and Sisters, so forth. This was exhibited in, 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 in an exhibition in London um, Gee-type flask, folded on glaze, mounts. Um, William, oh, the mounts were done by William Elliott. The vase was Chin Lung period. <clears throat> and it had been exhibited at one of the big pavilion, uh, the Brighton Pavilion, excuse me. It had been at the Brighton Pavilion. There was an enormous write-up on this. It was a very interesting piece. It was a, there was a bit in here about uh, uh, William Elliott, the, the uh, gold and silversmith who worked in England, that made the mounts for this. And the family somehow got this <clears throat> out of the uh, Brighton Pavilion and or bought it. And then they had um, uh, Elliot do these spectacular gold or, or gilt mounts for it. And uh, the vase um, is Chin Lung. It was really an interesting thing. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't mean to go on too much. Let me clear my voice a little. Uh, and in the end, it did very well. It ended up selling for... Um, uh, uh, ninety thousand dollars is 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 a log into view results. I was logged in earlier and somehow I got logged out. Hold on a second here. There we go. Uh, oh, seventy six thousand two hundred dollars U.S. That was the final price. Excuse me. The I estimate was ninety thousand. I don't think that was a bad price at all. This was a heck of an attractive object. And Chin Lung with uh, silversmith of, of considerable fame from the early 19th century put the mounts on it. So I thought that was great. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. And then over to this. This was the other thing that had uh, the Kengxi uh, uh, pot in the same sale that had the mounts on it. Silver mounts this time. Um, the, the, the marks for 1717. It doesn't say who the silversmith was in this case. But what was interesting about this was that this was uh, one of these uh, Cafe au lait, um, Femi Ver, I mean Wutsai uh, decorated pots. But notice how dark and brown it was. Unusually dark color for the, this cafe uh, ground. They or, or sort of an odd, a peculiar color because they can get very, very dark, like you see on Batavia wear, which is, which, is, which is extremely dark. And then they have a much lighter version. And this is sort of a midterm. It's a very unusual, um, what would be referred to cafe uh, uh, coloring. And I like the silver mounts a lot. I think those are just elegant. It's like the kind of thing you see on very fine um, English tankards. 
Uh, this is a beautiful example. And uh, in the end, it sold for $7,620 on a five dollars to $10,000 estimate. So the estimate was, was right on the money. Um, of course, the estimate was pretty wide. It was from five to 10,000, which is a pretty big range. But uh, these things are very hard to very hard to estimate these days because you get some, somebody who come along that just said, I just love it. I have the money. I want it. And, and that's it. And they'll just pay whatever it is. All right. And then the next sale that came up was this. This was the Jordan Saunders collection. And you may remember this. There were, there were a whole bunch of very, very fine uh, Famille Rose export figurine and porcelains and these great dinner services. And this was the sale. That's right. This is the sale that had all the nice tankers in it. And I'm going to refresh this. For some reason, it logged me out. I'm not sure why. All right. Now, um, pull this up. And we're going to go back here and type in Chinese. There we go. And uh, here they are with the prices. Uh, and this, these did very, very well. I think uh, uh, virtually all of them sold. I, I don't remember any of them passing. I'm not seeing any that passed. Uh, but these were these very fine 18th and 19th century examples with some really great armorial uh, pieces. And you can see here some of them did very, very well. 17,000, 11,000, 10,000. Um, uh, 16,000 and so forth. Then the figurines and then these massive dinner services. And some of the, a couple of the dinner services did incredibly well. Uh, so that market is fine. This is the thing that strikes me funny is that, is that the, some of the export wares did fantastically well. Uh, you had this, these uh, t sort of pseudo tobacco leaf pattern uh, pieces that sold. The pair of plates were only estimated at 1500 to 2500 which was pretty on the low side, very conservative. Uh, ended up selling for $6,350. $6, and then you had these uh, two figures, Chinese export for, uh, rose figures of ladies, Chin Long period, of course. These were beautifully done. I love the I love the, the shade of pink on these. And they actually went over the rest of it. They were estimated at five to seven thousand and they ended up selling for ten thousand. But if you pull them in, you'll see that the, the quality of the decoration, the the, the 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 brilliance of the pink, this nice nice green that they used, and all the other color combinations were all so complementary to one another that it really, really worked well. And the facial expressions, the modeling and the hair. It was, it was just excellent. And uh, let's see here. How tall were these? These are pretty good size, right? Yeah, they were 11 inches tall. So almost a foot tall each. Um, and they went for $10,160. And then you had this, another pair of them that were even finer. And um, I think they were uh, a slightly larger. These were 15 inches tall. And they were estimated at fifteen to 25000 And in the end, they ended up going for 16510 And again, uh, very, very pretty. Beautiful pinks. Beautiful complimentary covers, colors. I love the facial expressions. I love the facial expressions on these two figures. I think they're just. I think it's great. Um, they're, they're very animated. It's almost. They almost look as though they're about to speak to you and hand you these little vases. Um, um, really lovely. Uh, Sixteen thousand one hundred five hundred and ten dollars. And then over to this. Now these were the dinner services. These things had a huge amount of interest. Apparently, I talked about this particular service because I just thought it was so attractive. Um, uh, uh, wonderful patterns, um, uh, wonderful uh, quality enameling, no borders on them other than on the shrimp dishes at the tops um, where they have this uh, you know, flange uh, as a handle. But the rest of them are all uh, 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 just decorations like canvases right to the edge, right to the edge of every plate. And they were estimated, a good estimate, ten to fifteen thousand dollars. And these were mid nineteenth century, most well made around eighteen thirty to eighteen forty. They call that mid nineteenth century. Why don't you see what they brought? Um, these, these, the crowd went wild for these things. Uh, this service, and they ended up selling for forty eight thousand two hundred and sixty dollars for this uh, mid or, or second quarter of the nineteenth century um, uh, Famille Rose dinner Mandarin dinner service. Uh, so, so here you have, we, we just a minute ago, we were looking at the uh, 18th century chocolate pot that went with grisaille decoration that went for nothing, next to nothing. And then you have a, a 50 year later <laughs> uh, dinner service that blew the roof off the place. And again, it's because they're highly decorative. They're extremely pretty. It's a big set. And it's something people with a lot of money want to own because they look spectacular in a, in a sideboard or in a side cabinet in a dining room or something like that. These were for show. Somebody bought these for show. And uh, here's, here's one of the armorial uh, uh, dishes uh, with, with, the, uh, with, the, with the province of uh, 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 Brab, Brabant. Brabant? Brabant? Um, uh, 
Crest uh, ended up going for, uh, I think these did, I think this plate did pretty well. I have to refresh the pages because I've got logged out. There we go. Uh, $17,770. And then this was the Rockefeller. And the other armorial pieces did well too. You can go and check it out <clears throat> if you want to go and go through each one. But overall, they, they, I pointed that out just to make the point that the armorial pieces, the stuff for the European market and, and these European wares uh, did very, very well. And then you had this, this Rockefeller pattern Mandarin uh, dinner service. This is quite unusual to see this many pieces of Rockefeller pattern. And lately they've been very, very popular. And uh, I forget how many pieces there were. Uh, 26 pieces. Uh, it went for a total of $21,590. Um, so, you know, you're, you're sort of at about $1,000 a plate, which is not a lot for Rockefeller pattern. As, as we know, we've seen these, uh, like these oblong plates that are showing up front here. Um, in auctions, and they sell by themselves for two or three thousand. And the dinner plates and the and the, the wider, the larger dinner plates or bowls like this um, sell for fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred uh, pretty routinely. And the smaller ones bring eight to twelve hundred. So I think th these represented a very good value to somebody. If you take those individual values and add them up, um, I think somebody did really well on this. All right. And uh, that's about it. I just wanted to go through this real quickly. Um, these are all um, available. Uh, the, these global member page things are all available just by accessing the global member pages directly through bid amount by joining there or through the Patreon side. You can get to them from either. Um, but uh, there, you miss some interesting things if you don't do it. I'm just, I'm not, you don't have to sign up for it, but um, uh, you, you do miss, you miss, you miss a lot of stuff in the course of a week. Um, without it. Uh, but those were the results. I think the results overall were pretty promising. Um, Asia Week is coming up in um, um, uh, a couple of weeks. And uh, as we mentioned a, a few days ago uh, or two weeks ago, Bonhams uh, has a, got a very interesting deaccession from the Metropolitan Museum and some other collections. Um, and we're going to be learning a lot more about that in the next week or two. Uh, so uh, uh, stay tuned and uh, stick around uh, for later today for the uh, weekly video. We'll be putting that up. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't so far, click the subscription button below. And um, um, I'm sorry, I didn't, I did, I meant to do this video actually earlier in the week, but I, as many of you know, I've had some things going on here and uh, uh, been a bit, a uh, little bit run down and a little bit uh, um, um, uh, unable to do what I wanted for, for a couple of days. But I'm back now. I feel pretty good. Uh, so on we go. All right. Bye-bye.